While I had previously named Forsaken of Zinch the best overall infantry in the game in terms of just general usage and cost effectiveness, in terms of pure quality, infantry versus infantry killing power, nothing can stop the exalted bloodletters of Corn. These guys have a truly obscene stat line rocking in with only 40 armor, which is basically their only downside. 42 melee attack with flaming and magic damage 44 weapon strength 31 of that is ap with an, an additional bo 13 bonus versus infantry 36 charge bonus more charge bonus than bestigor uh they've got weapon strength with the anti-infantry bonus applied on par with something like a chosen or a black orc if not higher with 20 extra unit models right rocking in as a full 100 unit models way more to weapon damage than any elven great sword i mean these guys are truly truly spectacular in melee and probably kill again i haven't had a chance to test against any warhammer one or two factions yet but i would imagine they probably beat or trade with cost of uh, trade cost effectively with any infantry in the entire game bar none um and which is appropriate i mean that is very much corn's special specialty right in a heads up engagement they should be the absolute strongest today i'm playing nurgle facing off against one of my patrons achilles here who's been favoring corn recently hasn't played too much multiplayer been mostly focusing on corn though which is definitely a good choice to focus on they are a strong faction in general well balanced not too op but can definitely contend in the number of matchups uh, coming in with my build first, I've got an exalted great unclean one, provide that sweet AoE drain against corn, help protect against uh, all sorts of different threats. We've also got a soul grinder. These two can fight together against a big scary demon of corn. And of course that ranged attack will be pretty good against all corn infantry. <clears throat> also got a couple of Nurgle cultists here and a couple of Nurglings. Rot flies in reserve, five forsaken, beast of Nurgle, four toads. Uh, Fury and three more Nurglings. Uh, my patron Achilles here has got Scarbrand, two Cultists, and two Exalted Bloodletters. So a very narrow, very tall, if you will, snar starting army, but extremely strong. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it ends up playing out. It's got Blood Crushers in reserve, some more Bloodletters, four Halberds, four Flesh Hounds, and four Furies. So let's jump in and have some fun. Yeah, Scarbrand is scary. And both of those Exalted Bloodletters are very scary, actually. Sitting and thinking about it now, and during the game, like, when I saw his initial starting army, I'm like, oh, you know, outside of the Soul Grinder shooting, these Exalted Bloodletters, like, nothing in my army can actually kill them. I mean, I guess Exalted Great Unclean One fighting on top with the drain effect over time could drain them out, but uh, direct damage, <clears throat> I'm assuming it still is affected by magic resistance. That was the case back in Warhammer 1 and 2, but the Exalt Blood Letters, of course, being Demons of Corn, do have a sweet 25% spell resistance on top of that 20% physical. Uh, the Hellblade as well, as they get kills, once they get above 80, they'll get an additional weapon strength buff, which is just insane. They'll be punching way, way high, and as Demons, they are almost functionally unbreakable, especially given that they have pretty high leadership. Scarbrand getting the fun started, though, with a nice breath attack. I'm going to somewhat pull back my Nurglings. I don't think he even got a single model actually down there. Yeah, so no kills so far, but a little bit of HP damage. Uh, going to be raining some shots on these Exalted Blood Letters over here. Mortar shots land, do a little bit of damage, but uh, notice what Achilles is doing in terms of strategy here. He can see that I'm going for a heavy center push. He's just going to send these two Exalted Bloodletters out, one to each objective initially, and just kind of distract here in the center with the Cultists and with Scarbrand. And the issue here is that in order to kill these Exalted Bloodletters, I'm going to need either the Great Unclean One or the Soul Grinder. <clears throat> that being said, though, they need to stick together to protect each other from Scarbrand. Scarbrand's also significantly faster, 80 speed. The Soul Grinder 75 could maybe keep up with them, but definitely not the Great Unclean One, only 36 on the big green chungus so uh I, i'm in a bit of a pickle in that because you know these each of these individual units is strong enough that i'm gonna have to commit a lot of resources to take them out um that's gonna potentially leave me vulnerable in the center if i do send these you know major heavy hitting units out to the side so for the time being i'm just gonna contentedly hold the center and try and rally together some forces go on the side after those exalted blood letters but i'm, I'm kind of like sizing up my options right now of what i actually have in reserve like what can i do <laughs> in 
what can I actually do to take down these blood letters? Looking very, very cool. With their hoofed legs, just trundling on down the hill with their giant great swords. Man, those things are truly, truly massive. Gonna get a little bit of engagement. Scarbrand comes in, slaps the cultist around a few times. I'm gonna get the uh, plague bears summoned. Burn both the summons early just to kind of keep my opponent Achilles away here. But honestly, not the greatest summon. They're just gonna get kited out here because they're so slow they can literally get outran by the cultists i mean the cultists are pretty quick actually 44 speed on foot definitely not too bad but uh for now salt of blood letters you can see just a couple of mortar shots landing did some pretty significant damage but uh, right now my mortar is firing i think at the halberds which is definitely i mean <clears throat> any of the court infantry is going to be decent enough value to fire at but in terms of threat I think definitely these Exalted Bloodletters need to be the target priority for me, but uh, Scarbrand, once again, seeking out an engagement, tries to come into the center, but with all of these single entities here, uh, even with the two cultists in support, this is just not going to be a good engagement for him. Maybe, though, I might uh, miss slip up on my micro and overextend with the uh, Soul Grinder, perhaps. Maybe pull it back just a little bit. Don't want to get too crazy. The cultists, of course, can regenerate, so I'm not too worried about them. Got a couple of Nurglings summoned in, and these Rotflies. I was hoping that this would be enough to take out the uh, Exalted Bloodletters here, but let's watch and see what happens. I'm going to keep the health bars up because I want you guys to see the charge bonus is so legit on these guys. Just look at how they absolutely shred those Nurglings in mere seconds. I mean, on the charge, they actually do have... Uh, like 90-something weapon strength, right? With the charge bonus, the weapon strength, and the anti-infantry bonus all added together, it's 90-plus, which is enough to one-shot a lot of infantry unit models in the game. I don't know about Nurglings. I actually don't remember, but you can see one unit already being banished. The other unit is suffering pretty badly. And the Exalted Level Letters don't care at all about the Rotflies coming in to try and assist, so this is bad. This is <laughs> more points than the Blood Letters are worth, definitely, that I'm just kind of throwing in here. And the Forsaken, too slow to reinforce. They'd probably just get mopped in that engagement anyway. I mean, any of my infantry uh, is going to get mopped in a head-to-head -head engagement there. Even, I mean, I guess Exalted Plague Bears maybe would do okay, especially with healing. Anything else I have is going to struggle mightily. Thankfully, I'm doing just fine holding the center here. Scarbrand's actually just going to forsake this fight and go way up around and I think start to support over here because I am myself realizing that I am going to have no problems holding the center here, at least for the time being. Might as well send some more Nurglings and the Forsaken, rather than diving in to their immediate death, are going to try and pull back. And with Nurgle, it's pretty important that you try and keep your forces, uh, you know, in sort of small functional groups to support each other so that you can attack with multiple units at the same time does require a little bit of timing and, and precision in terms of your summons and positioning. It can be a little bit unforgiving. One of the reasons why Nurgle, I think, struggles in general in, in multiplayer right now is because of that fact. Just by design, uh, we're going to have a tough time in that way. Let's see. Another breath attack there. Oh, maybe. He's, he's thinking about it. He's definitely considering his options. Meanwhile, the Exalted Bloodletters pull back to the support of the Halberds, kind of in a block formation there. We've got the two Flesh Hounds also moving in, so going to be quite the engagement. I think, actually, Achilles has managed to mass with the Hounds here, actually has more resources in that fight than me. So probably is not going to go well, but we'll give it a shot anyway. I have to make some kind of push here to try and force him off one of the objectives, but... Yeah, it's a dilemma for sure, because, again, if I send these two over here... He can then move Scarbrand in and just annihilate the center force. If I don't, then he can just win anyway over here. And especially if Scarbrand goes over, like I mentioned, he is now going to. But uh, I decided to bring a couple more reinforcements, a couple more Nurglings, Forsaken and Nurgle as well. Oh, man, health bars once again. Oh, the Forsaken just getting eaten alive. Just completely eviscerated. The Exalted Bloodletters taking almost no damage there. The poison literally doesn't help at all, and those Forsaken just get absolutely butchered. So, um, yeah, that's one one situation where the Zinch Forsaken will just perform better because the barrier and the magic damage gives them an advantage. Whereas Nurgle Forsaken, the poison only goes so far for you, and the Cloud of Flies takes some time to actually activate. And I think those Forsaken, oh, no, they didn't even have Cloud of Flies. I thought they for sure had Cloud of Flies. We all learned something new today. Anyway... 
More Nurglings going to be reinforcing in here. These guys do have their Hellblade charged up, so you can see it now up to 53 uh, weapon strength with poison once that wears off. <clears throat> so just ridiculous, honestly. Just so, so strong. So strong. Can't wait to use those guys against some of the, like, Elven factions. Like, even, to be honest, even against Heavy Cavalry, like, even against Empire and Bretonia, most likely, right? They just have such strong offensive stats. They can punch against heavy cavalry and heavy chariots and anything really their offensive output is good against any targets but certainly against infantry it is almost disgusting not like nurgle disgusting like different disgusting <laughs> anyway fun stuff scarbrand managed to make his way all the way up and around over here so even though the reinforcements of forsaken were actually starting to push through and uh, finish off some of the flesh hounds <clears throat> do some good damage to the halberds Scarbrand's got other ideas. The Toads also actually come through. Finally get a decent an, an amount of damage on these Exalted Bloodletters, but they're still just fighting uh, with great leadership there. Oh, nasty side shot breath attack from big Scarbro there as he hucks his axes into that combat. But uh, yeah, man, the Bloodletters, I mean, even with only 36 defense, like in a sustained fight, they're just taking a surprisingly low amount of damage. And I guess that is partially due to... Nurgle's low attack in general. I would think that uh, the Forsaken would maybe get some good offensive output, but I mean, the, the physical resistance definitely helps a lot, I would say. Um, similar typed units, like, I mean, there's not a lot of really directly comparable units in terms of like a light greatsword, right? The only thing that even falls remotely into that category would be something like, uh, I don't know, I guess Wild Rangers don't even count technically as great swords because they don't have an anti-infantry bonus right but yeah i mean they are functionally as tanky in certain situations certainly not against range fire but in melee i'd see they're functionally as tanky as something like uh uh executioner most likely i need to do some testing but they just oh such an awesome unit to be honest Garbrand here just absolutely destroying my flank. And at this point, there's not a lot of hope for me coming back. I mean, maybe if I push forward and try and capture this objective here with this force, it looks like Soul Grinder is going to get sent over there, but I think I forgot orders on the rest of my units momentarily. I mean, I'm getting pretty close to the point where I would have to three cap to be able to come back. Um, we did get some, some blood crushers in through here, managed to interrupt them with the rot flies and to do some pretty cost effective damage there as well. Uh, you can see the blood blood crushers just having a hard time pulling out and getting a clean engagement. But once the rot flies get isolated, I mean, they'll definitely get dragged down by the halberds and everything else. And oh, oh, Scarbrand. Nasty, nasty things. This game is awesome, guys. I know it definitely has a lot of issues, but such a good base to work from. Visually is incredible. Definitely looking forward to some updates. But uh, what we have so far looks very promising. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, man, those rock flies just get wiped. And I still can't push them off this objective. And you know what's still alive? You know what's still alive is these exalted blood letters here. Just feasting nonstop. Uh, especially with all this support of the blood crushers and flesh hounds, scar brand. I mean, they're at very little risk of actually getting wiped. So they can continue fighting here. Oof, that Flesh Hound just mauling a bunch of units right there. Oh, yeah. Any hits they do get, obviously, they're going to do do the business. Anyway, we've got some more summons coming in now, it looks like. Uh, some more regular blood letters being summoned by the cultists. My own cultists are still fighting. I haven't resummoned them in order to get the demon summon back. But finally, I do realize a little bit late that oh, I actually need to fully three cap here at this point. And momentarily, I started capturing that far ground objective. Eventually, just not. No, no surprises. Unsupported. The soul grinder also just gets torn down here. So maybe not the best game by me, I have to say. I'm not super used to playing Nurgle. No, definitely my least favorite faction, I would say. Uh, Cathay actually has some things to offer in terms of gameplay style. And, I mean, they are human faction, which I am partial to. In general, Nurgle's very cool, don't get me wrong. And I love the lore of Nurgle, and, like, yeah, there's a lot to like, for sure. But just the play style, really, it's this, like, slow melee army play style is definitely not for me. But it's fun, and uh, it did reasonably decent. Soul Grinder managed to pay for himself. It's all 
Exalted, great unclean one, not quite. But uh, yeah, the rest of my army kind of just gets massacred by bloodletters, to be honest. Like, <laughs> and flesh hounds. A couple of the Forsaken managed to pay for themselves. But uh, yeah, 182 kills, almost 2,000 damage value at the end of the day. 25, almost 25,000 damage dealt total. Uh, just spectacular performance. Really can't say more. Than that, uh, the southern unit barely got into combat, got shot by the soul grinder a little bit, managed to uh, melee it down at the end there, along with the halberds and some other units. But uh, just the one, I mean, the one pays for both of them by itself, which is just very impressive. One of the better performances I've seen from them recently. And just in general, I think this is a unit to watch out for, definitely. Situationally, it can be very good, especially if you don't have the tools. Your opponent doesn't have the tools to deal with it, as I did not hear fell into that trap myself rest of the army here skull crushers don't really do a ton alberts get some okay value back in a couple of instances same thing flesh hounds actually not like all over performing which is not typical but uh yeah i mean the main main body of damage was actually done by this one unit and scarbrand which is pretty impressive honestly uh so there you go <laughs> exalted blood letters are very strong Hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.